friends, welcome to another episode of the Moreno Report. I'm here with Lieutenant Colonel Marco Moreno of the Israeli Defense Forces, and we're just going to ask him for... We're, we're going to run through some updates, run through some bullet points. So, Marco, give us an update on the war first. Gaza front, and then we'll move to the northern front and some other issues. Yeah, so, hi there, folks. Uh, let's start with the Gaza uh, front. So, the IDF now is doing as following. You know, Gaza Strip is divided for three parts. It's the north part of Gaza, which is Gaza City, the center, which is the refugees camp and Khan Yunes, which is the second largest city in Gaza. And the third part, the southern part is Rafah. So the war started by a intense uh, military operation boots on the ground in the north. Now we are uh, phasing, uh, sh we, we see the end of phase of Khan Yunes, the center one. And uh, eyes and uh, tanks and troops are looking to Rafah. You can hear the jets. We are now uh, standing in the Golan Heights. Behind me is Syria. You see the Hamon Mountain. And over there, it's the Lebanese part. Now we are hearing IDF jets probably going to bomb or in Lebanon or in Syria. So as I said, Gaza Strip, three parts. The intense uh, uh, ground operation was on the north part and now in the center. And now it goes to uh, the south, Rafah. I know everybody is around about oh, Rafah, Rafah, it's a big deal. Without the army going into Rafah, it means we didn't achieve the, one of the main goals of the war, which is destroying Hamas. Hamas is established from 24 battalions. Mm. We already destroyed 20. And we have uh, left four in Rafah, which uh, that will happen probably in the next uh, week or two, uh, that in case if the hostage deal will not, uh, not start to roll. <clears throat> the army is doing something, uh, something new now. For instance, after they finish the intense operation in the, in the north part of Gaza, they withdraw back, went to Khan Yunis in the center or to Rafah, but they are still sending troops to the north again. Uh, working uh, according to intel from all the prisoners, Hamas prisoners we have that gives intel. So the army goes in and cleaning the rest of the uh, the rest of the terrorists that stayed in the north or in Khan Yunis or in the south. Israel is still looking for Sinwar, which is the Hamas leader. We there is rumors maybe he fled to Egypt, maybe not. It might be true, it might be not. But one of the main goals is to uh, capture him and kill him. Uh, and of course, uh, free all the, all the hostage. Uh, I think in person that the only, the only thing that will bring back the hostage back is a military operation or military pressure, nothing else. Everybody knows Hamas, in order to do the hostage deals, is talking about, let's end the war. In the war, rebuild Gaza for us. Give everything back. Let's go back to our yeah. Conversation. Take a white flag and surrender. It's yes. it's craziness, and probably will not happen. So, uh, that's Gaza. North Front, as you can hear, we are still in the same field, which is what what is the field? The field is that Hezbollah is shooting over here. We are shooting over here. No one is breaking the rules. Uh, I think the IDF or Israel is waiting until the Gaza Strip war will lo go down and then you will see troops coming from Gaza here to the north and then probably a, a big war will uh, happen here in the north which will be very, very hard and difficult especially for the civilians that lives in the north part of Israel and even Tel Aviv. Uh, there are talks about the uh, political or something agreement. I don't believe in it in person because you cannot do any kind of an agreement with a terror organization. Mm -hmm. In that case, Hezbollah. The Iranians are saying to Hezbollah, don't break the rules because we don't want to lose you. Mm -hmm. We already lost Hamas okay. as a proxy, as a main proxy. We don't want to lose you guys here in the north as a proxy. We still need you 
uh, to achieve our nuclear uh, inspiration and then let's see but uh, it's complicated in any case the life in Israel now is that in the north people are living kind of kind of a weird situation they don't know what to do mm -hmm. there is a war there isn't a war there are some places that uh, you know it's like It's like Yom Kippur ongoing all day long. Yeah. Everything is closed. Nothing is... Tel Aviv and the rest, Jerusalem is pretty normal. If you go to Tel Aviv, you don't feel the war. But that can change if if the war hits here in, uh, in the north, in the Lebanese front. Syrian front, it's uh, pretty quiet now. Uh, Israel in the last few weeks uh, attacked a massively Iranian presence, which I think uh, led the Iranian withdraw back and call all their officers back to Tehran in order to save them and uh, so that's for that okay so I want to ask you about Sinwar there are you know I saw photos that like his body double had been captured last week obviously he's the like if we can capture Sinwar it would be like capturing Saddam Hussein when the Americans invaded Iraq it would be like getting the Sama Bin Laden. He's, he's the guy so if he's escaped through Egypt, it would have to be through tunnels because Egypt has been fortifying the border with a wall. We talked about last week, like a yeah. wall that would rival Trump's ambitions on the Mexican border. It's it's a highly fortified wall. So how in the world, where is Egypt in this play? How in the world would Sinwar have access to come out the other side on a tunnel, possibly with hostages if he fled and took his leverage with him? Yeah. Uh, first of all, if he fled to Egypt, he fled through tunnels. Mm -hmm that are located between Rafah, the Gaza side, and Rafah, the Egyptian side. Mm -hmm. Those tunnels are exist for a long time, and those tunnels are the, the, main, the main pipe of equipment, smuggling weapon, and everything from Egypt, or from Iran through Egypt, in the end, to Gaza. Mm -hmm. um, the, he has relationship with the Salafist group in Sinai, okay. which are against the uh, Egypt, uh, the, the Egyptian regime, which actually has a peace deal with Israel. Yeah, which is a cold peace deal, but they have a peace deal, and we have good relationship with the Egyptians in terms of security and others. So I don't think he, if he fled to Egypt, he didn't do it uh, for uh, like with knowledge of the Egyptians. Okay, it's, it's without their knowledge. Uh, I mean, I'm in person. I don't think he fled. Okay. You think he's still in Gaza? I still? think he's still in Gaza. But he, he might do it when he feels, when he hears the tank over his head, like in the last minute, he might do it. Uh, one of the things that the army should do is when he goes to Rafah, is to block the tunnels. Mm -hmm. So in case if you fled with the hostage, we care about the hostage mainly, we will prevent that. Uh, and now it's the time to... Uh, to talk about Philadelphia Road. Everybody's there. Philadelphia Road, it's a 12 kilometers road border between Rafah, uh, Gaza Strip, and Egypt. That's the road. It's it's a road. It, Philadelphia, it's an army code. Okay. There isn't a road called Philadelphia. We call it Philadelphia, but it talks about Philadelphia. It's an army code, long time ago. Even when I was soldier in Gaza, we had Philadelphia Road, which under this road, there's a lot of tunnels. So the army, once he will go to Rafah, one of the things he will do, he will uh, capture Philadelphia Road in order to block and start working on uh, what's underneath. Let's see. So one thing that's happening this weekend, you know, we're filming this middle of the week, this episode will release in a couple of days, um, and there is there was an announcement or, or an intel leak that Putin has invited... Um, the leaders of Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and the Palestinian Authority to yeah. meet. So kind of give give people an overview. We know who Hamas is, obviously, but mate, last week we talked about in the West Bank episode, the Palestinian Authority. Who is it? Palestinian Islamic Jihad. How are these things separate? How are they the same? Palestinian uh, Islamic Jihad as guys, as you can hear, the army is not inspecting the show. <laughs> it's sending uh, as we're jets here. Yeah, who we'll think there's a war here? What's yeah. going on? But okay, let's be patient. 
Damn. I grew up in uh, I grew up in the Air Force, and I grew I was born on the base where we had the B fifty two bombers flying. So all of my childhood memories are like we just had the, like super loud, way louder than this B fifty two bomber jets that would go over, and you would have to wait like five minutes. Yeah. So we did that for you. You feel comfortable here as you like, yeah. As it, was, it was pre gaming. Yeah. Um, so Palestinian jihadic Islamic. It's another terror organization. Sunni mm. one. Uh, what, Hamas and PA, are they also Sunni? Yeah, Hamas and okay. PA are also Sunni. Um, Why are they buddies with Iran then? Ah, that's a good question because Iran, in order to uh, fight us, is willing to partner with the Sunni uh, uh, organization which in terms of religious, it's crazy. Because the Shia and the Sunnis, are, I hate, they hate each other basically yeah. more than they hate us. But... In order to overcome the Zionists, it's nice to partner uh, with them. So uh, the thing that will bind the fractured house of Islam is the hatred of the Jews. Yeah. So Iran is Shia, Sunni is Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, and Shia Saudi, is Muslim. Saudi is Sunni. Saudis Sorry. is Saudis and Qatar. Uh, Saudis uh, looked on themselves as the leaders of the Sunnis world. Mm -hmm. Iran consider herself as the leaders of the Shia world. Mm -hmm. And Qatar is in between. Qatar is with everyone, by the way. He's yeah. with the Sunnis, with the Shia, with the Americans, with the Israelis, with everybody. They are buying. They are buying themselves. They are buying their way all over, uh, all over. So. Uh, okay, so Iran's hanging out with these Sunni terrorist organizations. Sponsor them, money, training, equipment, everything. Saudi right now is trying to broker a normalization deal with the Zionists, with Israel. Yeah, in order to fight Iran. So you can imagine just the quagmire of the, the chessboard here. And then you have Putin saying, hey, guys, come for coffee. What's going on there? Yeah, that's 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 exactly the point. Putin is feeling his left outside from what's going on in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it's his. He's sad. He feels left out. Yeah. yeah. He wants friends. And uh, he wants, like, it's one of his things against America, mm -hmm. where I'm influent in this region. That's the reason he's doing it. Uh, we have a pretty mixed relationship with Russia. Hmm. In one hand, we have good coordination with them in Syria. But in the other hand, you see him hosting Hamas and all terror organization uh, hmm. against, uh, against us. I think it's, it's related to the relationship and the war in the Ukraine, hmm. uh, which everybody forgot now. Everybody, all the eyes are in Gaza, so everybody forgot about the Ukraine, but he's still... Hmm doing it, what he's doing, the bad things he's doing in Ukraine and actually winning the war. But uh, I will not take it. It's not that serious that he's hosting them. He can host them. He's, he's not uh, different from Arzwan, the Turkish guy, or someone else. So let's talk a little bit more about this uh, Saudi component and the, because it's they're brokering a bit. It will normalize with you. But there's got to be a Palestinian state. Like now that Saudis kind of come to the table and go, okay, okay, okay. Like we've we've got the cloud, we've got the weight, and Israel, we can we can smooth things out. But now we're gonna we're gonna bring Hamas's Christmas list to the table, and you have to give us some of these things. Where do you see it, this going? You know, I cannot ignore the the talks we hear in the last week about America recognizing the Palestinian state, mm -hmm. one side. Now, a state would be different. Like, they have the territory that we were in the West Bank last yeah. week. A state would give them military autonomy, political autonomy. Like, what are the yeah, immediate it's, it's, dangers? It's not about the immediate dangers. It's like the declaration of it. Like, mm -hmm. you are giving a prize to terror. Yeah. So if you do After October 7th... Yeah, you, get a, you get a state. Yeah. Like, we have... Ingoci ongoing negotiation with the Palestinians for 30 years, almost now, Oslo Agreement, regarding a Palestinian state. And after October 7, after what they did, and remember the Palestinian Authority, it's the authority that pays salaries to terrorists, mm -hmm. and uh, teaching the kids in school how to kill the Jews, and, 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 and. And after that, you give them the prize, yeah. Blinken, the Secretary of State, the, the Jewish guy, uh, probably hates his uh, Judaism and I don't know what. Because mm. he's the engine behind it. 
which is pretty, pretty crazy and weird, but that's what's going on. Do you find a parallel there? In the, when you look back 50 years to the Yom Kippur War, we also had a Jewish Secretary of State. Kissinger. Kissinger, who said, to, he had that famous conversation with Golda Meir, who was the Prime Minister of Israel, and he said, you know, we're, I'm, I'm an American, I'm the Secretary of State, and then I'm Jewish. And she said, well, sweetheart, here we read right to left. You know, you have, you're Jewish first. Is it is it like a strange kind of poetic irony to you that 50 very. years later we have October 7th? We have very, very. It, um, I'm telling you, and I'm not like blaming, of course, all the all the Jews in America or something like that. I'm not doing that. But it's so weird and crazy that Jews leaders from America hmm. are uh, like in the end of the chain standing with Israel. Yeah. And my message is for the American Jews, you should learn from the Christians, the evangelicals in America, how to stand with Israel. They can set an example for you how to do it and not, you know. And it's also a message for Israelis here, living here. Just look upon the evangelicals and look upon the, not all, but some of the American Jews, what they are doing, standing with Israel. Yeah. Well, actually, I think... If it's, do you have more you like to talk about this week, or do you want to use that as a preview for our conversation next week? Yeah, well, it's pretty done. Keep on praying for us. Uh, uh, let's give an update of what we are doing. So we are continuing doing the distribution from bomb shelters. Uh, we have now a relationship with the hostage family that we help them. Some of them are very broken, so we stand with them quietly not publicly but uh, standing because we respect their privacy of course and uh, also we're going to do rounds for soldiers in in the south in the north you know just support them be with them that's that's it for now all right next week we'll talk about genesis all right thank you guys we love you, we love you shabbat too. shalom, shabbat shalom.